Former President Trump made his way to the Badger State this week. He told voters in La Crosse he would support protections for in vitro fertilization amid calls for stricter abortion rules from his base. This is all part of an effort to gain support from suburban women who contributed to his loss in 2020. CBS 58's Emily Fannin, Wisp Politics editor J.R. Ross, break down the campaign strategy in tonight's Capital Connection. We begin with Wisconsin once again this week being in the national spotlight as the Trump campaign barnstormed the state. We had J.D. Vance and DePierre earlier in the week, but first we want to talk about the former president who was in western Wisconsin, actually the first time this election is cycle, which is a very swingy district, which is Wisconsin's third congressional district. He spoke at a town hall event in La Crosse, which was a very different format than the traditional Trump rallies that we see. Um, the event was cut short due to storms, but there was still an opportunity to voters to ask him directly about the economy, Im immigration. Uh, foreign policy but the first question that he was asked by the moderator actually had to do with in vitro fertilization an issue like abortion that Republicans have had has struggled with ever since the reversal of Roe v Wade in 2022 when it came to IVF Trump pledged that he wants to protect it by either having the government or insurance companies foot the bill and it's a very expensive service but this comes as we've seen the former president try to change his tone about this issue over the last several weeks as we get closer, of course, to Election Day. And the response from the anti-abortion activists has not been great to that response. It also came as he told one reporter that he thought six weeks was not enough, referring to Florida as a, uh, a law about a six-week abortion ban. There's a referendum coming up. He made that statement in his campaign, but also quickly say he has not said he's going to vote on well, that because he's kind of alienating that anti-abortion base. Now, the question is, you have a pre former president who appointed three justices to the Supreme Court, Vote over Roe v. Wade, the ultimate prize for anti-abortion forces. Would those folks actually stay home come November for a guy who's maybe not sticking close to their priorities because of his history? It's a really interesting dynamic for him that he's trying to dance because the more he pleases the anti-abortion crowd, the more he alienates the suburban female voter uh, in places like Waukesha County that he needs to win Wisconsin. Right, and we're told uh, by the Trump campaign to expect either the former president or his running mate, J.D. Bands to be in the state every week leading up to Election Day, and that's probably something we're going to also see from the Harris campaign that we'll get to a little bit later in the show about when they're coming uh, to the area. But speaking about just La Crosse County, I want to talk a little bit about this, too, because it was reliably red for a very long time, but in 2022, or 2020, excuse me, President Joe Biden won it, flipped it blue, and it's now kind of somewhat of a competitive district. JR. So look, these visits are about uh, math and symbolism. So the math is, yeah, Western Wisconsin as a whole, looking at the third congressional, Trump's won that in 2016, 2020. He doesn't need to win it again. He needs to run up a margin there, a good margin to offset like these losses we're seeing in suburban Milwaukee. Dane County, for example, is a turnout machine for Democrats. So you've got that, that math thing. What can you pull out of these various regions to kind of get to 50% of the vote in Wisconsin plus one? The symbolism is, you know, going to Kenosha for J.D. Vance, violent protester four years ago, a law and order theme. You're seeing a mix of those two things in these visits we're getting from both tickets. All right, and looking ahead to who's going to be on the November ballot this week, the State Elections Commission approved three third-party candidates and why this became a little controversial, we're going to get to in a second, but of course, who's, who we're going to see? Robert F. Kennedy Jr., despite stepping uh, out of the race, suspending his campaign last week and endorsing the former president, he's going to remain on the ballot because there are state laws that say after you file your nomination papers, you can't remove your name. Then we also had Jill Stein. She's with the Green Party. There was a challenge uh, trying to remove her name as well, but that was rejected. And there was a case not even accepted by the state Supreme Court earlier this week. So that's done with. And then also we have Cornell West, an independent candidate. But we want to talk about Kennedy and Stein specifically because there are concerns from both uh, sides of the aisle that they believe, like in past, that these are candidates that could possibly take votes away from their nominee. But what's interesting, Jer, is this is a little bit different dynamic when you're looking back at 2016, when, of course, the Hillary campaign, Hillary Clinton's campaign pointed to Stein as one of the reasons why they lost Wisconsin back in the day. You know, a difference is enthusiasm. So look at 16, uh, no offense to Secretary Clinton, but they didn't run a great campaign in Wisconsin, didn't come here after the primary that April, didn't run ads here, really, and lost by 22,000 votes and change. Stein pulled 31,000. So some cast are in the spoiler role from that election, but the reality is that Clinton didn't get the base fired up enough, didn't put enough energy here to get turnout where it should be for a Democrat to win Wisconsin. Fast forward to now, people tell me if Joe Biden was still the nominee, they'd worry about Jill Stein. 
all right? So she could pull enough away from him because of things like the environment, uh, the conflict in Israel right now, that would worry them. But Harris has generated enough enthusiasm. They feel Democrats okay where they're at. They feel like there's not gonna be that big of a deal. With Kennedy, he's off, he's out, but he's not off the ballot. So the question is, will some Republicans who are going for Kennedy look at him still as a, an alternate to Trump? Go back to last Marquette Years of Law School poll, about 10% of Republicans were voting for Kennedy, 4% of Democrats. So the fear among Trump people is he'll pull from the former president. Republicans in general are behind Trump. Some aren't real happy with him. So is Kennedy an option for him? Two, are there low information voters who don't realize he's not running anymore right. who would vote for Kennedy anyway? It, look, the big picture is if RFK Jr. or Jill Stein, the reason you lose Wisconsin, you got bigger problems. You probably have problems in other blue wall states like Pennsylvania and Michigan. Got problems in the Sun Belt states of Georgia, Nevada, uh, Arizona. So I don't know if they're definitively going to be the reason why I mean, wins or loses Wisconsin, but they might be enough on the margins to tip the state. Right, because we know uh, there's a lot of razor thin elections here in the battleground state. So quickly looking ahead to next week, uh, Governor Tim Walls and his wife will be in Milwaukee. Uh, can probably predict they're going to be speaking at Labor Fest on the Summerfest grounds because that is a very traditional spot where even we had President Joe Biden speak at in 2020 at Labor Fest. Then looking ahead to Thursday, Biden will be also in southwestern part of the state. Still don't have details yet on exactly where, but once again, Trump campaign all this week. Next week looks like uh, Harris campaign. And again, math and symbolism. Uh, Walls is going to Milwaukee. Key turnout uh, area for Democrats in the city to do well for them. And two, symbolism. They're running as a pro-labor ticket, right? They want to have the labor vote. They want to try and snuff out the options for Trump to pull off some of the blue-collar workers who are going to Labor Fest. All right, that will do it for this week. Thanks so much for joining us.